I, I wanted to attract better talent. Uh, I wanted to put out better books. Um, I wanted to change the way people regarded Image Comics. Then Brian K. Vaughn comes along with Fiona and they do Saga. It's the power to the creator. I think that's the one, one I'm most uh, proud of. And I think the Image Brotherhood is most proud of. With The Walking Dead printing money, Image Comics now had its biggest hit since the company's early days with Spawn and Youngblood. Newly minted partner Robert Kirkman and publisher Eric Stevenson had a simple strategy to turn Image into the HBO of comics. What did you see your mission statement as and your goal as, as publisher to be? At that point, uh, I, I wanted to attract better talent. Uh, I wanted to put out better books. Um, I wanted to change the way people regarded Image Comics. Um, again, as, as I told you earlier, Robert and I used to talk on the phone all the time, and Robert had just been made partner around the same time this happened. But yeah, we kind of put together a list of people that, that we wanted to get over to Image from, from either Marvel or from DC. Uh, who was on that list? Oh, uh, who was on that list? Uh, Brian K. Vaughn, Grant Morrison, Mark Miller, Matt Fraction, Rick Remender. We wanted to get him, we wanted to get Ed Brubaker. The, the only person that was on my list uh, that, 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 that we could not get was Alan Moore. Remember those names, we'll get back to them. But in the mid-aughts, the comics industry was still struggling. And then came the summer of 2008 and the release of a non-image comic book movie. I've said this many times, I, I truly believe that Robert Downey Jr. saved comic books. Yeah, because Marvel was all in on Iron Man. You could be a, a C, D level character. And, you know, Robert Downey Jr. and that suit saved Marvel. Because I think they had a lot of their eggs in that basket. And I think if that movie had not worked, uh, I think Hollywood would have turned its head away. And I think the general populace would have turned its head away. It's like, eh, comics don't mean anything. The birth of the Marvel Cinematic Universe had film and TV studios hungry for comics. And Image's diverse slate of non-superhero books offered lots of opportunity. 2010, The Walking Dead debuted on AMC and slowly grew into a monster hit. When I think back on what my former, you know, child self would think is the coolest thing about my life now, way better than The Walking Dead show. Like, you go back to 12-year-old Robert Kirkman and you're like, you're a partner at Image Comics, and they turned one of your comics into a TV show. And he's gonna go, partner at Image Comics? What are, we, what are you talking about? Really? Oh my God. You know, I don't even care about TV. <laughs> Remember the talent Stevenson wanted to bring to Image? Brian K. Vaughn would team up with Fiona Staples on Image's best-selling comic since The Walking Dead, the space opera series Saga. Then Brian K. Vaughn comes along with Fiona and they do Saga. Not quite as big a lightning bolt as, as walking But dead, a big one. But big. Brian, he came to us with Fiona, but but I don't, I don't think anyone could have ever imagined like the huge impact that she was going to have just in terms of, I mean, I mean after Walking Dead, Saga is our, is our most popular book, and, it, and it's, it's drawn by a woman, not by a man. I think that that's huge. The size that Saga's gotten with their massive trade sales and all the things going on, uh, it's it's going to change the face of media as things go forward, and and uh, its its influence is going to be felt, you know, throughout the world. And I think that's something rather remarkable. Vaughn would also co-create the time travel nostalgia fest and Eisner Award-winning Paper Girls with artist Cliff Chang. I don't think we'd be able to do a book like Paper Girls unless it were creator-owned. You know, there's so much of ourselves that's in the book. Um, because we're, you know, a similar age to the girls, because it's about our history and a little bit about our sense of nostalgia. Grant Morrison would come to Image with the off-kilter fantasy redemption story, Happy. It's got a real odd flavor, really interesting flavor that I think people are gonna like. Kieran Gillen and Jamie McKelvey conjured up the epic gods and pop diva mashup, The Wicked and the Divine. It is very Greek gods, because the Greek gods are even much more flawed than, um, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, even the Wicked characters. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> sort of humanity writ large in that respect. And Sex Criminals by Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky found life under Stevenson's watch. There's a lot of empathy, especially in Sex Criminals, is sort of something is, is kind of personal and unique and, and uh, bespoke as somebody's, you know, sexuality is. Stevenson and Kirkman also set about bringing in more diverse voices to image, such as Marjorie Liu, Sana Takeda, and Kelly Sue DeConnick. At a certain point, I forget who said it, but someone said, you're going to have to go after them. 
that, you know, but because you're not publishing a lot of a lot of women, you're, you're going to have to you know take the initiative and go out there and find. Them. And it's actually simply a byproduct of trying to find the most forward-thinking, creatively progressive creators to do the best, most creatively progressive books. So I got an email from uh, Eric saying, hey, I think we should talk about what comes next. And uh, and I was like, uh, great, okay, um, well, you know, uh, Valentine Delandro and I are working on this, um, uh, this like sci-fi women in prison in space thing. Um, and it's just tentatively called uh, uh, bitch planet, but you know we could we could change the title, uh, and I, I think that's literally all the information that was in the email. And he wrote back, "I would very much like to publish something called Bitch Planet." Period, and that was our green light. We wouldn't have been able to attract any of that talent had had Walking Dead not been successful. Walking Dead was kind of like the beacon on the hill that said, "Okay, this can be done. Come over here and and, and, and unleash your ideas." With all the new talent and comics coming through the Image Pipeline and ratings for The Walking Dead TV show shattering cable records, Hollywood once again came knocking on Image's door looking for more. Kirkman's horror thriller Outcast was picked up by Cinemax. Mark Miller launched a new age spy franchise with artist Dave Gibbons with Kingsman The Secret Service and its sequel The Golden Circle. Morrison's Happy was picked up for series by Sci-Fi. Gillen and McKelvey's The Wicked and the Divine is in development at Universal Television. Fraction Sex Criminals is in development there as well. And a movie reboot of McFarlane's Spawn is in development at Blumhouse. Once the home of big hair, big gun superhero mayhem, Image Comics is now defined by its diversity and eccentricity across comics, television, and movies. You know, when they were founded, it was definitely more like superhero driven and big muscly guys and women with giant boobies and, you know, all that stuff that I'm not into. And now they're like, that's who you go to for getting, you know, like different horror books or, you know, like a queer base book or, you know, like stuff that isn't superhero, like different kinds of stories. Bitch Planet, Pretty Deadly, Youngblood, Wildcats. <laughs> It's kind of funny that those books all reside under the same umbrella. Yeah. If you think about how, how different the books are. Legacy? How about flipping the script? For today's comic creators, the goal isn't to use indie books as a springboard to one day write for Marvel or DC. It's the reverse. Image is born of creator rights, so we kind of feel um, a necessary duty to try to see, okay, where else can we be better? So can we kind of stop pushing comics? I worked on Nail Biter and Birthright and Ghosted, and those definitely shaped, helped shape my career, but they helped shape, shape me as a writer. It changed the whole face of comics when, as I say, Dark Horse Image started up, and then lots of others. Prior to the real rise of Image, um, more than 90% of our industry had been these uh, two long storied shared universe superhero comic companies. You know, I've been lucky all my life because I've always had the strand where I've, I've done the Batman stories and the Superman, but I've always tried to maintain a creator own streams. And Image are really open to wild ideas. But the great thing is now that so is television. Which is crazy, the fact that Todd McFarlane gets the exact same deal at his company as 22-year-old Robert Kirkman, who's like, hey, I got this idea for this zombie book, what do you guys think? No one's ever given a platform to, you know, anyone who has talent in the way that Image Comics has done that. What Image represents to me in all of its varying degrees is that if the medium stops being sexy to corporations, it won't matter, they'll still be comics. The seven rogue comic artists quit Marvel at the height of their popularity, looking to cause so much damage and they did just that. It's just allowing creative people to do creative work. It's really what it is, is just that, that uh, as much as humanly possible, being super hands off and letting creators do what they do best, and that is create. It's the power to the creator. I think that's the one, what I'm most pr uh, proud of. And I think the Image Brotherhood is most proud of the fact that um, even though there were independent publishers, and people doing things on their own beforehand, it never hit the mainstream like Image Comics did. 
Oh, I'm incredibly proud of it. I, I think, well, I think we did the right thing. I think we did it at the right time. I think that was kind of the modern day comic book artist kind of taking form, which is, it, yes, you work for a company, but you are not an indentured ser you know, servant to that company, mm -hmm. that you have other options. I'm going to my grave saying, saying, in 1991, on December 1991, we started a company called Image. And, and, and I gave all my effort creatively in terms of comic books to Image, period, done, out.